welcome back we'll start with the new topic that is encephalitis so what is encephalitis it is an infection of brain parenchyma with the evidence of neurological symptoms and infectious encephalitis will start like uh, flu like symptoms and progress over several days and this is all called as infectious prodrome so what is infectious prodrome contains it contains history of increased temperature rashes lymphadenopathy and sick for few days if these are all present that is called infectious prodrome and this will lead to odd behavior decreased consciousness and focal neural deficit in the patient so that is what about the infectious prodrome so what are the clinical features of encephalitis the patient will be having bizarre encephalopathic behavior like disorientation to time place and person there will be reduced uh, gcs that is glasgow coma scale uh, score will be reduced sometimes there will be coma too and the typical symptoms like fever headache focal neural deficit stiff neck photosensitivity also will be present in the patient and sometimes there will be seizures and positive brudzinski signs so when we see the specific symptoms deja vu and hallucination of odors will be present in a hsv infection okay and uh, we should look for the history of travel here and animal bite or any other infection we should look for the source to identify which organism causing this encephalitis one more important things we have to note here is if the infectious prodrome is absent we should look for encephalopathy so what are the symptoms or causes of encephalopathy it is hypoglycemia hepatic encephalopathy dka and certain drugs systemic lupus erythematosus and sometime due to hypoxia which is leading to the brain injury so these are all the causes of encephalopathy we should look for uh encephalopathy if the infectious prodrome is absent next what are the causes or causative organisms of encephalitis first we are seeing the viral here hsv1 is the major organism or most commonly causing organism which is present in all the ages in all the season okay and uh, uh, certain others are varicella zoster which is present in the elderly most common and cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus arbovirus west nile virus enterovirus like polio which peaks in late summer and early winter okay that is what about the viral and if we consider it non viral like bacteria fungus like that uh, the major encephalitis will be caused by tb malaria listeria lyme cryptococcus and here we should see as i said in the uh, symptoms too we should look for the history of travel animal bite or any other infection okay if there is a secondary infection it may cause the immunological response and it might lead to autoimmune disorder or autoimmune encephalitis here in the autoimmune encephalitis this uh, will directly affect the nmdar or vjkc complex antibody and will result into encephalitis moving to the investigation or diagnosis here we will do the blood culture that is serum for viral pcr and we should do malaria film too because there is a chance of cerebral malaria in the endemic region which will lead to encephalitis and in the lumbar puncture we will look for lymphocytic pleocytosis which is seen very much in viral infection and we are doing pcr for hsv and uh, varicella zoster cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus hiv enterovirus and west nile fever or west nile infection and serology will be done for the immunoglobulin that is igm and in the uh, radiological examination we are doing the contrast enhanced ct scan 
here we will see bilateral temporal lobe involvement which is seen in the HSV infection and if the patient is allergic to contrast we are supposed to do magnetic resonance imaging MRI okay after that we are supposed to do EEG that is to diagnose or confirm the diagnosis of encephalitis this will just confirm the diagnosis but not the causes okay after the lumbar puncture if we send the csf for the culture we might see the elevated protein and wbc and there may be reduced glucose too next move into the medical management here the patient should be treated for the encephalitis if not treated there is high chances of mortality that is approximately high as 70 percent mortality rate okay so we will start the acyclovir immediately after the admission that is immediately 30 minutes it is like a empiric therapy for hsv and dose will be 10 mg per kg eight hourly iv for one hour it is a 14 days therapy but the patient is immunocompromised we will give for 21 days immunocompromised patient will be seen usually in the hsv2 infection and if the if we are suspecting the patient for the cytomegalovirus infection or cytomegalovirus encephalitis we should start with the gancyclovir with or without foscarnate okay and if for the symptomatic therapy we will give phenytoin for the seizure so that is what about the encephalitis we'll see in the next class thank you